Hello there everyone and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for me to bring you episode number 27 of this whole City career mode on FIFA 17 in general, I do believe it is episode number 8 of season number 2 and today of course as per usual at the moment anyway we've got 3 games, 2 of which in the EPL with 1 in the Champions League in the middle and we've got our toughest test in the Champions League all season so far, we are away from home against Real Madrid at the Bernabeu with Premier League title against Everton and Middlesbrough um, around them. We've actually got a very busy December actually before we move into the transfer window so we are quite close to the midway point of this season already. Just taking a quick look at the emails in terms of things that happened last episode we did end up with an injury out of the final game that was Albert Rusnak who got a sprained ankle so he'll be out for four weeks. Not too bad although with the amount of games we've got this month uh, that could rule him out of a good six or seven in all competitions and um, also about, I think it was back in season one actually, or right at the start of season two, I asked you guys whether I should get a scout future star, and overwhelmingly, I think basically everyone voted for yes, but I actually forgot to do it. So at the moment, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and do that, and uh, we've got our best scout going out to try and find a scout future star player. New month, new set of players being trained. We've got five players for this month: Dave Fraser, Archie Mitchell, Linus Valkvis, Sardar Asmoon, and Wyland Cyprian, all being trained on attributes that I feel they need to be trained on. Uh, and Valkvis goes up in his first training session of the month, up to a 77 overall. Oh. Uh, Oh dear, oh dear, ladies and gentlemen, this is huge. Sardar Asmoon has su suffered a torn quadricep muscle and is out for two months. Um, with the mechanics of this game, he'll obviously return about a week or two early, so he'll be back in mid-January, but that is a lot of games, and a lot of important games as well. He's going to miss that tie against Real at the Bernabeu. So, first game of the episode, and it's first versus second in an unlikely scenario between two rivals. It is Hull City versus Middlesbrough in the Premier League. Honestly, I'm getting a lot of deja vu for Season 2. We've got two teams in the top two that probably shouldn't be there. We've got a moderate injury crisis again at this exact point in the season where we had it last year we had injuries in November and December last year and we've got them again this year I have however turned the sliders down a little bit more for the AI's so their shot error and pass error is a little bit lower than what we've been running before I'm gonna turn it down I think to 35 and 35 for shot error and pass error I could probably turn it down to 33 or 32 beyond that if it is still too easy but I don't think I could go much further than that now it's Cyprian that's a good back heel back to Hernandez. Good effort headed in towards Cosielo. Goes for the acrobatic effort, which is deflected over. It's been a pretty fast paced start from Middlesbrough, in all honesty. They close down pretty well. They're pretty intense with their passing play and their defending is pretty solid. I can understand why they've had a good start to the season. I feel like we definitely need to wake up in this one. That's a good interception, though, from Robertson. Here's Cosielo in towards Hernandez, but he puts the shot wide on his weak foot. Maybe had a chance to take a touch, but I was hoping he'd take it first. I was hoping he would finesse it, actually, as well, but he sort of sliced across it. Gaston Ramirez then will swing this into the box. It's a good ball in. Uh, the Middlesbrough player jumps higher and is in the back of the net. I wasn't expecting that to find its way into the back of our net at all. Hence the, sh the quite awful commentary that went along with it. Fantastic jump from whoever that was. I still don't know who it was. Was it in Sue? Um, Cardinal, you, on a usual basis, I'd be a bit annoyed he's been beaten at his near post, but it did go in off the post, so it can't exactly get much better than that. With the near post run of Abel Hernandez, is it going to work? He's going to flick it on, but he flicks it out of play. Not had a very good first 40 minutes, has the Uruguayan. But Abel Hernandez has always been like this. Abel Hernandez has always been the type of player to literally do nothing in a game until he scores a vital goal. Here's Jordan Rhodes. Can Michael Keane get to him? Now it's Gaston Ramirez in towards Rhodes again. Great save from Cardinal. What a block on the line by Michael Keane. Oh my goodness me. He knew absolutely nothing about it. But what a block from Michael Keane. That is a game saver potentially. Goodness me, what a save as well from Cardinal, could I just say, but goodness gracious me. To be honest with you, apart from that chance with Hernandez, we've had very little, to be honest. I really can't complain if we lose this game, because we've been just outright a little bit poor, to be honest with you. But here's Robertson, Stefaniak's on the overlap, as always, he's going to cut inside, but again loses the ball. Just everything we've tried really just hasn't worked. Passing through, we haven't been able to break them down. Running at them, we haven't been able to break them down. And uh, here comes Prib now, Edgar Prib, And Valkvist has brought him down. 
Oh, is the referee going to give a red card? Of course he is, because it wouldn't make any sense to do... How? Oh, just... Yeah, okay. Day gets worse. Linus Valkvist is sent off for dragging down his man. That's the second stupid red card of the series that Linus Valkvist has had. He's, yes, he's tugging his shirt, but he isn't actually the last man. See, where's Hernandez? Where he, Hernandez is our striker. Where Can someone explain... Where he is? Where is he? This is Cyprian. This is Sanjay. Where is... Hernandez just isn't here. A very frustrating afternoon culminates in a 1-0 loss and our first loss of this, se of this season. Not this series. I keep wanting to say series. Against Middlesbrough, who are second in the league. We had a man sent off at the end being Valkvist. But it, was a, it was a shocking decision from the ref, but it didn't really impact the game whatsoever. So I can't complain about that, but it means that now we don't have Valkvist for the next game. Uh, nevertheless, our best player on the pitch was uh, Ndidi. I can get on board with that. Ndidi was pretty solid. Cyprian was good defensively, but pretty poor going forwards. Kozjela was a bit in and out of the game. Uh, now, due to the injury for Sardar as Moon, we're going to have to include a new training slot for the rest of this month and in future. So Johan Cardinal is going to be trained from now on in that final uh, little training slot. Let's see what we get in terms of growth. Archie Mitchell goes up to a 66 overall after going up on his dribbling and Dave Fraser is very close to a new overall as well. Now we've been given a scout futures. Is this him? Is this him? I don't remember. I don't remember this guy. I honestly I can't tell who it is. I think it's this guy. This Lance Harris guy, 83 to 94. I don't remember him. I would, I would know him. I don't remember him. So I think this is the the scout future star guy. He looks very good actually. He's 61 overall as well. We've got a lot of players though in this youth academy with good potential. Liam Griffiths there has got good potential. Basically everyone here is looking good. Now with the situation that we're in going into the Champions League final match of the group stage, we've got a plus four goal difference over Roma. Um, our head-to-heads are, are equal because we beat them and they've beaten us. So I'm pretty sure it now goes down to goal difference. I hope that's the case. I'm very tempted to experiment a little bit and play Shea Adams up front because I was so actually disappointed with Abel Hernandez in that game. I am genuinely very much considering playing Shea Adams up front or even Dave Fraser to be honest with you against Real Madrid. I'm feeling surprisingly relaxed going into this game. Not complacent because I know it could still go wrong from here mathematically. I feel as if we can definitely get something out of this game if we play to our full potential. Mostly we are unchanged. The only difference is being Bailey and Afori coming in in terms of the side against Middlesbrough and also Shea Adams gets his big chance for Abel Hernandez who is dropped from the squad completely. I'm aiming for a draw to be, to be honest with you. I'm aiming for a draw like I was in the home fixture. I'm not going to set up stall to draw. I'm still going to attack as if I want to win because I do want to win but I would take a draw obviously because that would mathematically get us into the next round. Unsurprisingly the player to watch out for is multi Ballon d'Or winner Cristiano Ronaldo. He's up against the titan that is Linus Valkvist today and last time Ronaldo and Valkvist were matched up it was one of the greatest defensive performances I've ever seen in a career mode on this channel. But this is Hull versus Real Madrid at the Santiago Bernabeu. Just again in this situation of not really knowing what to do on the edge of the area. Bailey in towards Cosiello who can go for the finesse. It's going to drop towards Antep and he puts the ball in on the rebound. And Paul George Antep gives us the lead here in the 23rd minute. It's our first goal of this episode and it's a very scrappy one to be honest with you but yet again it is created by Cosiello. was just saying I was really wondering what on earth to do on the edge of the area but just having a shot on its own was enough to cause issues. Kayla Navas parries it out to an onrushing Antep who gets there before Marcelo and half volleys the ball into an empty net and we are 1-0 up. Uh, one thing I have noticed about Ronaldo's game in this one, he's not attempting to run at Valkvist because uh, he was doing that a lot and he was losing out as we, as we all know. He's not been running at him, he's been always passing when he's had the opportunity as Ronaldo so Valkvist has already got the psychological edge in this one. Indeed, he's going to win that in the air. Fair play to him. Here's Shea Adams. What can he do? He can go past Rafael Varane. That's what he can do. Goes for the shot there. And it's just wide. Marcelo did bring him down, but that is some nice positive play from the Englishman. First time we've really seen him going at people, running at people. Got the edge over Varane. That then is half time at the Bernabeu, and we are 1 0 up, doing very much enough to qualify for the next round of the Champions League. Ball in, first time from Ronaldo, headed away. Can Mason get there? He can! What an effort from Tony Kroos! 
Jesus, good save from Cardinal, but what a volley that was from that man there. Dropping out of the sky, that is incredible technique from Kroos. That's going bottom corner as well. One-handed save from Cardinal to keep it out. Valkvist is far too tired. Valkvist is going to come off, actually. Have we got a right back on the bench? Please tell me, Odubar. Oh, no. The one time I don't have Odubarjo on the bench, for goodness sake. Well, we're going to try a madness. We're going to try an absolute madness. Marvin Stefaniak, go at right back, lad. He's always he's always um, tracking back and defending and tackling people. Why can't he do it from right back? Stefaniak not showing great defensive capabilities there in his positioning, but he did win the ball back off Ronaldo and he's just dribbled past him and then found Snodgrass. So... Decent introduction to being a right back from Stefaniak, though potentially needs to improve on his positioning. But he's still going forward here as Marvin. He's got men in the middle, if he can find them, puts the ball in, but it's deflected unfortunately and falls kindly to Navas. But unfortunately Stefaniak is now out of position. I've got to actually physically remember that he is actually a right back. Michael Keane there, outpaced. It's Ronaldo, Robertson's trying to get there, he hasn't, and he's found the back of the net. As Cristiano Ronaldo, it's poor defending and over-committing. And uh, perhaps bringing Stefaniak on as a right-back was a bad idea because I just basically used him as a winger. Snodgrass is making an overlapping run. This is him. Now it's Ndidi over towards Adams. On-rushing run from Bailey. Doesn't score, though. Good save from Navas. Wasn't the greatest of efforts. Oh, great run being made. That's Robert Snodgrass. Varane's actually picked up an injury. Snodgrass is going to try and make it 2-0, and he does 2-1 even. Robert Snodgrass wins the game for us in the 90th minute and secures our progression to the next round of the Champions League. We are into the knockout stages of the biggest European domestic competition there is, and it is 2-1. We have beaten the Galacticos. Final score here in Spain against Real Madrid. It is a 2-1 victory and we are through to the round of 16 of the Champions League. Man of the match goes to Michael Keane. Can't particularly disagree with that. He was very solid at the back. Good ratings as well for Antep, Son Just. Uh, we did actually have to get a decent result in that, although I don't think there would have been a four-goal swing. Roma did actually beat Schalke 2-1 in the end, but it's only enough for Europa League football for them. 18.5 million we got from uh, in terms of prize money from the Champions League and getting into the next round. Yeah, unfortunately that £18 million didn't um, go to our transfer budget. It only goes to the overall funds of the club, which is quite annoying. Time then for the final game of today's episode against Everton at the KC Stadium. Uh, one change I am actually going to make from that is that Stefaniak's going to come off for Leon Bailey. Odu Barjo is also in for the suspended Valfist. Here's just a reminder though of our squad. We've not seen too much fluctuation in terms of players really this episode. I don't think anyway in terms of the usual. Also just as a quick note, uh, Linus Valkvist I know was the player of the episode last time. There's not really much I can do when he's suspended for this game so he's played the games that he's been available for but being suspended means he can't really play every single game unfortunately. Here's Cozzelo now to Bailey. That's not Bailey, that's Mason. Sorry going for the shot. Good save from Guilherme in the Everton net. Good hold up play from Hernandez there, credit where credit's due, because Yellow's making a good run as well, can Yellow finish into the back of the net, and it is 1-0, assist for Hernandez, goal for Cozzielo, and it's that on-rushing run from that number 10 role yet again that provides oh so much joy for the diminutive Frenchman, and we take a 1-0 lead here against Everton, Mason finding Hernandez, simple pass through to Cozzielo, Guilherme rooted to the spot as Cozzielo finds the back of the net. You guys have been loving watching Cozzielo play as well. I remember someone saying they'd actually given up watching porn and they decided to watch Cozzielo playing as well. Uh, in, or instead. And to be honest with you, I agree with that statement. I would much rather I would much rather watch that at this point in time. Good challenge there from Afori. And again, double tackle from him. Through towards Hernandez, but he doesn't really have the pace to get past Funes Mori. Afori with a tackle again, though. Three in a row from the Ghanaian. He's on another level today. Here's Antep, brought down even by Baines. That was just cynical from Leighton Baines. Uh, and Tep stayed down, but I don't think he's actually injured. So, oh, we've got an injury there. Oh, it was actually an injury from from Tep. I didn't actually notice. I, d I thought he just um, stayed down being melodramatic, but he was actually injured. He has picked up a knock. It's on juiced against Barkley here. Robertson takes over control. That's a good ball through. Lukaku somehow not offside. Good block. It's fallen to Barkley. Great save from Cardinal. And Tep's lost that in a dangerous position. Uh, position. That's back to Lukaku. What a save again from Cardinal. 
Oh my goodness me, and Tep lost it in a really dangerous position. Lukaku with the shot, one-handed save from Cardinal. Resulting corner's going to come in, Delefeu's going to swing it in. It's towards the edge of the area, and that's right onto Antep, but he's lost it again, and it's into the back of the net. Oh, Paul George Antep. Oh, dearie me, man. Dearie, dearie me. I don't know who that is. Who's that with the shot? Who's put that in? Is that Oviedo? I don't actually know who that is. I've got no idea. But, oh, oh it's Besic. Of course it's Mohamed Besic. Yeah, of course it is. Um, that was poor from Antep. That, I don't know whether the injury contributed to that, but that was a shocking first touch. Everton looking dangerous at the moment. Ball through there to Besic. Again, he's gone past his man. Great save from Cardinal. But he can't get there on the rebound, and we've conceded again. And it's Delafeu and Morales just far too easily getting past two players. Oh, that's just just a tragic goal to concede. Cardinal is getting let down by his defenders today. This is not good. We lost against Middlesbrough. It was our first domestic loss or Europe, no, um, league loss of the season. And we're losing again suddenly. We've got another injury now to Ryan Mason as well. This episode is just falling apart at the seams domestically. Here's Cozielo. Bailey's not making himself very available. We're going to have to go to Hernandez through the middle. It's two. Abel Hernandez goes for the strike just over the bar. It was a decent chance, you know. It was a decent, decent chance. It's just over the bar. Hernandez did a decent job to make of that what he did because he was under pressure, but that was that was a good chance. That was a good chance to equalise there. Well, the sliders have had the desired effect. They're making it more difficult, but uh, that's two losses on the bounce in the Premier League, and it's not necessarily two, you know, two losses that we didn't deserve. I feel as if we thoroughly deserved both of them. Afori was good. Afori's defensive play was good. His run-making was good attacking-wise. I'd be surprised if he wasn't man of the match. And just to compound our misery, the injury situation gets ever worse. Paul George and Tep and Ryan Mason both suffering sprained ankles and will both be out for three weeks. That is now three injuries we've got at the same time. Well, we are still top of the table despite a pretty damn disappointing episode as far as the league is concerned we did do well obviously progressing into the champions league knockout stages that is a very good point of today's episode but the rest of it has not been too good whatsoever unfortunately we are though top on goal difference ahead of middlesbrough chelsea in third and then newcastle united in fourth in the background though you can now see the hall of fame again things won't particularly have changed too much apart from you know the amount of appearances people have got the amount of assists the amount of goals in the top right of the screen you guys can see that there is a poll suggesting player of the episode so you guys can now decide who is your player of the episode who played the best and who will play every single game of the next one there'll still be three or four choices because there were a few players that did actually stand out and play very well nevertheless though that is basically the end of today's episode if you have enjoyed feel free to hit the likes button subscribe if you're new to the channel as well you can follow me on twitter it is at the official fng and uh, comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much it's been a pleasure though ranting at you guys today have a great day enjoy yourselves and goodbye I got noise. I got noise. Yeah.